I find it very hard to believe that the people in leadership of the Democratic Party, the people in charge, are that stupid or ignorant. So therefore, it must be intentional. Jen, Jen, Jen. Um, sadly, your respect for the Democratic Party, which is far greater than my own, um, uh, leads you to imagine that the people who are in charge are competent. Okay. Uh, and I, I, I wish I could tell you it was a conspiracy because it would be so encouraging. Um, you know, because they're, they're strategizing, they're plotting and stuff like that. And certainly there are bad players, without a doubt. But I think the thing you need to understand is um, that unlike the Republican Party, which long ago decided to jettison morality and just go for a very, you know, core strategy at a constant basis uh, and and has succeeded quite well with that. The Democrats still tell themselves that they are. Um, you know, good folks trying to do good things. And uh, and I think many of them really believe it. I, I have no doubt of that. But the problem is they have never, as a party, at least not in the modern era, had the drive to achieve the things that they say they want to achieve. They're, they they don't put the, the strategies together. They don't put the, the energy together. And here's why. They rely for their funding on billionaires, multinational corporations, connected interests. And so uh, you always have this disconnect there where they're like, they're like, oh, we want to do these great things, but oh, that could, that could make it harder for us to raise the money we want to raise. That could make it, maybe we won't win if we stand for something principled. The end result is they constantly talk themselves out of doing the right thing. Now, at some point that itself, maybe that becomes immoral, right? You can say if you do that so often, it becomes indefensible. But uh, I really have, as somebody who's watched it for a very long time, become convinced that it is not a conspiracy of, of bad people. It is a it is an endeavor of incompetence. I why, have, why have they been able to get away with it for so long? And do you feel that we may be turning a corner because I'm uh, even something as simple as uh, you know, again, we're only where we are. Uh, we're only about 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops outside of Parkland. And, you know, what obviously happened this afternoon with Manuel uh, Oliver, um, who lost his son in uh, the massacre, you know, was basically telling the president to, you know, step the hell up already. And, you know, most people agree with him, but there's still obviously that of people who are like, oh, don't yell at the president. He's doing all he can. Uh, where do you see it going right now? Because obviously we know it's not going to be pretty in the midterms, but I'm wondering if we are turning a corner in terms of maybe awakening to the reality of where the Democratic Party stands and how they manipulate voters based on the idea that, well, if you don't vote for us, no matter how terrible we are, you get the GOP. That's uh, Yeah, I, I actually think we turned the corner in 2016. Um, it's just, this is a very hard racetrack and, and the turn, the turn takes a long time. Uh, but I have absolutely no doubt that, uh, actually, to be honest, even in the summer of 2015, as Bernie Sanders started appearing at rallies, uh, where they had, I'll give you, I'll tell you a story that Bernie told me. Um, he was, he and one aide were up in Minneapolis back in June of 2015, and they were driving around. They were a little bit lost trying to find the rally that they had organized and or that somebody had organized for him. And uh, his aide said, oh, wow, um, it looks like there's some rock concert or something here because there's a whole bunch of young people lined up outside. <laughs> and maybe we could ask one of them where this address is. So they pull over and they say it, it literally lean out the window and say uh, is, you know, we're, we're trying to find an event where Bernie Sanders is and and the people all looked like and they were all like excited because they said we're in line for your event and <laughs> it, and what senator said there was that it was in that instant that he realized this was a different campaign than the one that you know he had set out to run right he had hoped for all sorts of great stuff but suddenly thousands then tens of thousands then hundreds of thousands of people were literally showing up and they were young, they were uh, energetic, they were ready to, they were ready for this fight. Now, of course, 
the Democratic Party immediately ran screaming, leadership ran screaming from the room at the very thought of, you know, a massive, energetic young people coming in to try and make the party better. But I do think that's where the, the turn began. So the, the fact is, I think we're six years into it. I think there's a lot of bumps. There's a lot of push and pull. But at some fundamental level, um, when the Democratic Party stumbles badly, when it screws up, when it fails, um, we now have, I think, a broader, much broader consciousness uh, I, among a whole bunch of people that there's an alternative route. And so I, I'm in that regard, I'm hopeful. I just wish that that history moved more quickly than it does. Well, it could be moving in, in not so good directions. And I got to tell you, yeah. um, you know, you bring up the event in Minnesota. Uh, the event that really did it for me was at the beginning of June in 2015, when he did the rally at the University of Wisconsin. There was about 10,000 people that showed up. And I, and I was like, oh, this this is game on now. This is this is the big leagues. I introduced him. I did. Well, I didn't see the rally. I only I saw pictures. I saw pictures. But you could see inside yeah. the arena. It, yeah, it was I, like. This was a re you had to you had to know something was happening. Well, I, I can tell you another story. We were driving up to it. We were coming up to and we couldn't get to it because there was a traffic jam hmm. and we got close. And then we decided to we, to get there in time. We decided to get out and walk to the event. Right. Hmm. So we literally Senator Sanders, a couple of aides. And I was going to I'm from the town. So I was going to introduce him. Um, we were walking and we were walking through the crowd. And people were like looking, going, hold it. That's Bernie Sanders. And um, as we got close to the hall, there was a, a, a but maybe, I, I can't even imagine, tell you how many, maybe a thousand bikes all chained together, like just a massive number of bikes. And, and Sanders said, well, what's that? And, and I said, those are people that, that decided to get around the traffic by riding bikes to this event. And he said something in Yiddish that was, you know, like, like, a, I'm not worthy. Um, and, and uh, you know, it was a it was a remarkable event. And and so I know just what you're talking about. And I don't bring those things up to be nostalgic. That's that that isn't the point. Um, the nostalgia is interesting. And those were some epic moments, to be sure. But I bring it up because I really do believe that that was the beginning of a pivot in our politics. Now, the that sounds very optimistic. The. The downside of that pivot, right, or the downside of that that possibility is that um, when big changes come in our politics, uh, they usually come not just as a result of an individual or a result of a movement, but also a result of events, as a result of the times. And, and I think that's true. And so the question is, can the change in, Demo in the Democratic Party come quickly enough to meet the challenge of these times, because we are quite frankly challenged by the the threat of fascism, by the threat of you know authoritarianism, and some really ugly stuff. And so it is a question of can you have a alternative poll that is energizing enough, exciting enough, bold enough uh, to prevail in in that that great fight for the soul, not just of the Democratic Party, but of the United States. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.